Hey everybody, how's it going, man? Y'all doing okay tonight? I pray you are, I hope you are. Uh, my wife and I pray for you daily. We love you so. We uh, want for you what we want for ourselves, and that's to walk with the Lord God, get our rewards that we're supposed to get, walk holy with Him, complete our missions, and uh, help each other along the way. Why don't we do that? You know, <laughs> what you're witnessing today this whole border thing, it's Trojan horse case. Here comes all the enemy's soldiers. They're coming right into America. And you and I, with our eyes open, see that. We're not interested in funny car racing and round track racing and baseball. And are my ninth grader, my whole world revolves around my ninth grader and her sports and his sports. Oh, we just saw the Trojan horse walk in through from Mexico today, and they handed them all phones. They all received phones at the border and a promise that they won't be tried for 12 years. Uh, Vando's here. He's putting up the links. Uh, count, count up to Pentecost. And then uh, on the 21st, which is this Sunday coming up, is Mother's Day, what they call Mother's Day in America. And then the following week is Resurrection Sunday. And we begin, we begin counting up to 50 to Pentecost on Resurrection Sunday, which is the 21st. The 18th of May is the day Jesus died. It'll be Passover on God's calendar. Please honor the Lord. Please stop and realize how important this is. God created the sun, moon, and stars on the fourth day to give us a calendar, to give us 24-hour period, 24-hour days, to mark it, signs, signals. God's all about it, and it's so important to Him. Will you please stop and ponder what's important to the Lord and let it be important to you in your everyday living? Will you take that wonderful clock he's given you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and let every one of those minutes and seconds count for heaven, count for eternity, because you love the Lord. It's your gift back to him. He gave you time, and your gift back to him is you're going to celebrate him and heaven and eternal things all the time with that time. And you're going to bless him back and love him back. Praise God, that's what we do. We love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love our neighbor as ourself. We're encouraging you guys, read that 10 to 20 chapters every day. 10 to 20 chapters every day, 10 to 20 chapters every day, 10 to 20 chapters every day. For your sake, wash clean your mind that the devil, the world, the earth, everything's trying to pollute, even your own flesh, trying to pollute your mind and take you in the wrong direction. Read that word of God and let it, let it clean us up. Let it purify our hearts, wash our minds clean and do that. Take these Bible codes. Vondo has put up the link for the Bible codes. Download this book and familiarize yourself with it, man. Become so familiar with it. Uh, read it, know it, understand it, hide it, share it with other people, guys. It's vital that we do that. The Lord will bless you for doing that. I love every one of you. We looked at an amazing code last night. I'd like to start with that code tonight. Uh, Vondo's put up the link. Please support Sean. And I say amen. Support Sean, guys, in these last days. And, you know, even some of your support, the night of the rapture, he still might have some in the bank that the Lord intends for him to use in the tribulation, maybe to get him from here to there, maybe to buy some people some food. Okay, please give. Please give to that man, the man of God. All right, let's look at last night's code, guys. This was so vital. Uh, several of you have put up some good commentary on there. Uh, praise God for that. Excellent, excellent commentary. Let's start with that because it's so vital. It's so here. What you saw today with all those people coming in, they're going to hide them in underground bunkers, military bases that have been closed, and they are going to wait. And probably after, the, they'll probably uh, start riots and everything. A lot of these people are from the Mexican mafia, and they're getting into the United States to take our houses and stuff, okay? They're going to walk into people's houses and say, get out, it's mine. That's what's going to happen. Because, be watching, guys. 
we have a somewhat of a time frame. Janet Yellen, in charge of the federal money of the United States of America, said in a statement, a pretty elongated statement she made, George Stephanopoulos asked her some questions, and she answered, and the summary of her of her answers is, July 1st, they're wanting to go to crypto money in the United States because we won't be able to afford our payments. And he said, so what's going to be the result of this? She said, absolute chaos. And everyone on the panel believes it's going to be absolute chaos that will ensue. So we're going to encourage you not to get to the streets. Not, don't head out in the streets. Don't freak out. Don't panic. Now, they said June 1st, not me. Okay, This ain't the prophet, the word of the Lord. This is what Janet Yellen said. So we're keeping an eye on that. Okay, And with these guys coming in across the border two weeks before that, there's going to be some crazy stuff going down. People are going to be flipping out. Okay? I don't have an exact date for you, but we see the setup. We're watching it today. And they handed them all cell phones. July 1st. Okay, July 1st, Vondo says. My bad, guys. So it's uh, a month a month and a half. They've come in a month and a half. And that's right. It gives them time to set up, to figure things out. But they will be creating uh, riots and some trouble. Okay? Uh, Vondo, if you can find that Steph Stephanopoulos, whatever his name is, George, and his questioning Janet Yellen, that would be that would be really cool. All right, let's look at last night's Bible code. We want to start tonight with that because it's vital. It's the destruction of the United States, and we're watching it, guys, in real time. We're watching the characters make their way. What's going to happen is those guys will all have a safe location away from the destruction, away from the tsunamis away from the flooding, away from the uh, catastrophic repercussions of this thing. They'll be far enough inland and probably deep down underground. So it won't affect them. Okay. And then they'll become, they'll rise up out, out of the ashes. They'll come up out of the elevators and they will, <laughs> they're going to be predators on the prey. The poor fools who, we're still here who didn't die that night with the rest of the fools. They'll be here, and these guys are going to overtake them. It'll be a Trojan horse takeout. And beloved Obama's going to love every minute of this. This is his planning. He's done this. The Bible codes told us that he is the one who did this. So last night's Bible code says, A mile high tsunami will knock down completely, bury the abominable city of New York City. Because her sins have reached heaven, the city will serve as a harbinger, a warning to all the other cities in Mystery Babylon, which is all the world. Okay, And the ultimate Mystery Babylon is Jerusalem herself. And that's where it'll start in New York City with half the Jewish population and most of those being killed on the very single night, even before the tribulation starts. And then it will end in Jerusalem. And... Everybody that will be killed when Jesus shows up will have the mark of the beast. Th those who didn't get the mark of the beast will be in hiding. The, uh, God will have a special place for them. Okay, so we're reading this code from last night. It says, The city will serve as a harbinger of mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abomination of the earth, Jerusalem under the control of the Antichrist. Man, this is going to be bad. We will have been raptured. We will be in heaven. Glory to God. God gave us the Bible codes to give us blessed assurance and a calmness in the middle of all this mess, okay? Because there's truthers out there saying, oh, man, we got to run, we got to hide, we got to bug out, it's time. And you and I are like, okay, how about you just sit in your house, chill out, and the Lord will take care of us, okay? Because we've seen this coming for a long time, and he's told us, he shared it with us, and now we know. So the city of New York, when it's destroyed, will serve as a harbinger, a warning to the rest of Mystery Babylon under the control of the Antichrist, Barack Obama. New York sits in Ezekiel 7.25. We saw that last night, highlighted in the yellow part, and Ezekiel 7.26. 7.26 is rapture, harpazo. G26 is significant here and further confirms that the timing of the horrible disaster after the rapture occurs. And then we talked about Samuel. Samuel is the devil. He's the, he's the devil. And Jewish tradition talked about him. And there's a most common tradition. And who is it? He's the devil. He's a destroyer. Okay? And he is going to be the devil who's right there overseeing. You guys remember the photographs of the demon in the smoke 
when uh, wasn't the smoke it was the dustification of the towers and there was sure enough a pure demon face there uh, that might have been samuel he he might be the king of new york he might be the one who brings da- who initiated the destruction that's probably when he arrived Guys, it took a nuclear event. It took a terrible event. It took trauma event to get these demons here. And it's like a pentagram. You do the ritual and you draw your circle and then the demons come to that area. That's what the Super Bowl is all about. That's what the country music awards are all about. It's uh, it's inviting demons, bringing demons in through these singers, these temples. They are the temples. You and I are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit dwells in us. These guys are the temples of the devils. And so when a a devil is needing to come through from their side to our side, a ritual is performed and it is allowed. It's the way, it's the rules of the way God made it. Okay. And so they're allowed to enter our realm from their own. And they enter these people, the temples, and then they could bounce from, you know, person to person, place to place until they reside in their final resting place where they want to, to go, you know, these big wig rulers and, uh, Samael is the destroyer, the great destroyer. He'll be present for this great destruction coming up in New York City. So we've started tonight looking at last night's uh, Bible code. Uh, Sean says, I included this angel of death interpretation in my table for educational purposes only. While some Jewish mystics believe this concept, the scripture teaches no such thing. The scripture is our final authority. God and God alone is sovereign over the timing of our deaths. No angel or demon in any sense, can cause our death before God's time has, and his will has a, caused it to happen. Put your trust totally in Jesus Christ before it's too late and be delivered. And we saw those verses going for it, and wisdom is crying out. No wise people will die that night in the tsunami because we will have all been raptured. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, but fools make a mock it at sin. So the saved and everybody who is wise is saved. Now, there's different levels of wisdom. There's maturity in wisdom, but it doesn't start until you're saved. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So once a man knows about the gospel of Jesus Christ, how to be saved, I need to uh, see that my default, my eternal default has changed Now, everybody's eternal default is hell. You're going to hell automatically because you're imperfect, because you are unrighteous. Even though Jesus died for everybody's sins and Jesus loves everybody at Calvary, everybody is still going to hell because the issue is a righteousness issue. You can't go to heaven without righteousness, without holiness, without purity. So how is that done? By placing your faith in Jesus Christ, who is righteous, holy, and pure. His death, burial, and resurrection. His perfection. And what he does is he takes your imperfection, your sin, all your mess ups, everything, and he put that on himself on Calvary. All the sin, the weight, the stress, the guilt, everything was placed on him at Calvary. And God the Father rifled his anger out on him instead of us. It was our wrath on him that was being judged, but it was he who was judged for us. And you and I have been set free. Lila says, today I saw a message the devil is coming for the new Fast X movie. Yeah, yeah. All these guys, man, it's bad news. They, they praise the devil. They praise the devil. They praise the devil. And guys, it's time for us to praise the Lord. Amen. So the translation of this code that we looked at last night is like a moth to the flame. Hmm. Samuel, the poison of God. He is God's instrument. This demon, this high powered demon of destruction, this destroyer. This hellion is God's puppet, is God's servant, and he's God's angel of death. Is where America was knocked down. He measured the harlot's wages, for the wages of sin is death. The harlot's wages is going to bring her death, disease, pestilence, famine. All those things comes with wages. What comes with the free gift of salvation? Eternal life. Rest joy while they're going to be miserable and their their night is a night of misery when this happens to new york city the tsunami bombs go off the russians attack 
It's going to be a night of misery, and their misery will only worsen over the next seven years and get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And meanwhile, those of us who were wise, who chose the Lord Jesus Christ and placed our faith in Him and His righteousness was infused in us, we're going to have bl blessed rest. We're going to have peace. We're going to have quiet. We're going to have peace being still, stillness. And that'll only get better and better and better and better and better every day for the rest of eternity. Gary says, these wicked people want the devil. They have no clue what they're asking for. We believers want Jesus. We know exactly why we want him. We need him. Carlos says, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Amen, Garris. Keep reading the translation from last night. He measured the harlot's wages of the United States. The sea is high against the fool. That's everybody who wasn't raptured. We will be raptured and they will be destroyed. Woe to them, cursing to them. The land of New York's enemy is far away. That's Russia. They fired at her, New York, with a terrible, terrible disaster. The horror, the terror, the tsunami piled up. America is the graveyard of lust. New York. Oh, it's the city of lust. It's the city that never sleeps. And it's going to be a graveyard here shortly. And in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when we are called away, their land becomes a graveyard. This land is your land. God hates it. He sees it as a graveyard full of dead men's bones already. And you and I in faith, we need to see it the same way and quit celebrating this wicked, wicked, wicked place. It's a graveyard to the Lord. It is a tomb. The horror, the terror, the tsunami piled up. America is the graveyard of lust. New York. They sit among the graves at the seashore full of seawaters. A large wave, a mile high large wave. Her crisis by the Russians destroyed her. Mm. All right. Let's look at some codes from four years ago. June 7th, 2019. Yeah, the big abomination, the rotten apple. No kidding, no kidding. The rotten apple. And you know, it's crazy. Everybody always says that Adam and Eve sin was an apple. It, we don't know what it was. It was a fruit. But here's New York calling itself after that. And it's Sin City. And they're about to be taking out the rotten apple. Amen, Cheryl. As Sean said last night, New York equals 666 in English Gematria. It was named after the Duke of York, a Freemason. The whole thing, guys. That used to be the capital of the United States of America. Nothing has changed about it. It's still as filthy now as it was then. Freemasonry is filthy. It is Satan worship. They worship Samael. June 1st, expected debt ceiling reached. July 1st is when the digital payment system starts. So June 1st is what she was referring to in that, in that conversation uh, is when she s expects crazy stuff to be happening, chaos to ensue. Cheryl says, the habitation of dragons. That's New York City. The habitation of dragons. That is Babylon. Mystery Babylon. All right, guys. This is June 7th, 2019. He destroyed an ancient civilization, talking about Noah's flood. Sean says, the pre-flood world wasn't sticks and stones with cavemen. It was a civilization with advanced technology, and much of it can't be duplicated today, even with our current knowledge and technology. Just think about how more intelligent our God is. And these codes prove it. Amen? These codes prove how awesome our God is. Why do they change it to D.C.? Uh, to New York City, just another Seven Hill place, and the location was perfect. New York had to be New York, and D.C. had to be D.C. Because there had to be, New York needed to be uh, remain a place of the nation, the nation of the United States, so all the nation could be destroyed under her wickedness. D.C. is its own district. It is federal. It is not part of the nation of the United States of America. It is the Corporation of the United States of America, all capital letters. Okay, it is the Fed versus the national. And Don Trump was a guy representing the national at the Fed level. 
and everybody hated him for it because they're they've always been trying to incorporate the nation into the federal. Cleveland, Ohio is the very first city owned by the Fed outside of DC. Now all the federal buildings in the in the United States of America belong to the Fed. That is like their embassies. It is federal jurisdiction. The Fed has no jurisdiction outside of Washington, D.C., and then as their federal buildings accumulated and were built up, they had jurisdiction there. But they have no jurisdiction with you, but they pretend like they do, and they come down heavy on you like they do, and they'll throw you in jail if you don't pay taxes to them that are illegal. Okay, that's how this has worked. It's the takeover of the nation of America, and that happened in the 1800s, guys. That happened at Jekyll Island. Research Jekyll Island. When the money was changed, it's all about the money, baby. And when the money was changed by those bankers, they decided they they were going to use uh, the new uh, treasury notes and all that stuff. Well, the people who didn't like the idea were all killed on the Titanic. Think about that. The bankers who were against it, the big wigs who were against it, all died on the Titanic and the other people canceled their reservations. That was a Freemason hit, guys. They had technology that you and I don't know about. They sunk that booger on purpose to kill those people aboard. They planned on not having enough life rafts. The whole thing was a murder. It's a murder scene. So let's go talk about another boat, okay? There had to be a reasoning for the sinking. Money. Money was the reasoning. These people opposed the one world. The people who opposed the one world government, Jekyll Island. Research Jekyll Island. And those who opposed that were killed and have been killed ever since. JFK, he opposed it. He was killed. Lincoln, he opposed it. He was killed. Hmm, follow the money trail. All right, so Sean's letting us know that the, the pre-flood, before Noah, these people were advanced in their civilization. Uh, we, we couldn't be able to duplicate what they had. Cheryl says, we never won any war in 1776. Absolutely not. The Redcoats were here. Why did the Redcoats remain here for another 20 years after we won? Because we're still under the queen. God save the queen. It's all a lie, guys. Yep. All right. The code interpretation from June 7th, 2019. God's word. Listen to God speak. He destroyed an ancient civilization. That would be God. Salvation was a shield. That would be the boat. That would be the wood offering. Okay. Salvation was a shield. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth they trembled. The flood is a great destruction with high waters. Does that sound familiar to anybody? You know what's probably going to happen? Right after God destroys New York City and the United, United States with this water flooding, the false preachers are going to rise up and say, this wasn't God because God promised he wouldn't judge the world with flood anymore. And they're, they're going to be taking the Bible out of context. God didn't say he wouldn't judge portions of the world. He said he wouldn't judge the entire world at one time by flooding it again. He did say, however, the next time will be by fire and I'll melt it down with brimstone. Okay? That's why it's important to know God's word. And these poor people are fools who are all not going to be raptured. They're going to be left behind and they're going to be looking for truth. Remember that in last night's Bible code and they won't be able to find truth. It'll be nowhere to be found because all the truthful preachers will have been raptured. And what will be stuck and left on the earth is false prophets. And they're going to be trying to get their information from false prophets. And what do we have here in this code interpretation? There's going to be signs in the heavens. Uh, and this, this was at Noah's flood. They trembled. They were scared to death. The flood is great destruction with high waters. It's the same thing going to happen to New York City, guys. And people will be denying that it was God. Because God ain't going to destroy it with water. Because they deny the Bible code. They deny God. Vondo says they take the word out of context now, perfecting the act daily. And, and they'll have it, they'll be preaching it just like this because they will still have their imaginations and their foolish hearts darkened 
and God will have turned them over to the strong delusion because they have had a lust for pleasure and not a love for the truth. That's a Bible verse. And so these people aren't going to, they're going to be preaching, this wasn't of God. This wasn't, of, the rapture will have happened. The United States will have been destroyed. And these preachers will still be saying, this wasn't of God. Let's look at this code interpretation again from four years ago, June 7th, about Noah's flood. God destroyed the ancient civilization. Salvation was a shield. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth. They trembled. The flood is great destruction with high waters. 40 days and 40 nights. It was for love for those in the ark. Sealed by God. Jesus Christ is a picture of the ark, guys. It was on the cross, the wood of the cross, that he was pinned and he couldn't move away. He was stuck there. And God placed all of our sin on him at that place and lasered his wrath out on him for our sakes. That was love. Love was inside, sealed by God in that ark, in the wood, the wood offering. That's why the wood offering is so important every Pentecost. We count 50 days to wheat, then another 50 days to grapes, then the next 50 days will land in the olives, and then six days of the wood offering where the 12 tribes, over six days, two tribes would come in on each day and bring uh, two months worth of wood in to burn for the sacrifices at the temple. And the very next day, another two tribes would come in and they would bring in two months worth of wood. And then third day, two more tribes would come in and they would bring in two months of wood because the wood offering, the burnt offering was vital. It was a picture of Jesus Christ being the burnt offering, suffering for us on the wood, the cross. And the cross is our ark. The cross is our salvation. Will you please look to the cross, believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, and be saved like Noah was saved because of the wood there. Amen. And Jesus became our ark of suffering to save us. And will you enter into that ark? Will you believe? That's what baptism is, guys. True baptism is diving in, immersing yourself, all of your thoughts, your mind, your heart, everything with actual, pure, 100% belief. I believe the story of God, Jesus Christ, coming to earth and dying for me in my place. I believe it. I'm jumping in the deep end on this one. I believe the death, burial, and resurrection. And whoever does that, Jesus Christ will infuse his righteousness into you, and you now have a permanent, eternal ticket. In heaven, you are now saved, sealed, sanctified, justified, ready to be glorified into the kingdom. Will you believe today? Vandal says, "Code this code on page 381 in the book. 381. Amen. All right, guys. Let's look at the verse that goes with it. This is Psalm 144, verses 2 to 8. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower, my deliverer, my shield in he and he in whom I trust. Jesus is all of that for us. He's our ark. He's our safety. He's our salvation. So therefore, we shall not fear. We shall not fear. We shall not have torment. Our mind shall have peace and joy and love thinking on our Lord, thinking on our Savior, thinking on our high tower, our shield, our buckler, our defense. Amen. And we will trust in him. He subdueth my people under me. Lord, what is man that you would even take knowledge of him? We're so little. We're below the angels. For thou, thou didst make us a little lower than the angels, but yet you crowned us with glory and honor. And that's why the devil hated us. We were lower than him. We were made from dirt. He watched us being created. He watched Adam being created. And then God said, uh, this guy is going to be your master. And Satan didn't like that a bit, man. And so he became his master. And everybody who is a sinner and everybody who is in sin under Adam's fall is a slave to the master Satan. And that's what Jesus saves us from. He calls us out of that, out of darkness, into his marvelous light. And in Jesus Christ, there's freedom, there's joy, there's goodness. Gary says, shared the Bible codes today with a new believer in Christ Jesus, and he believes them and is going to study them. Praise God. The new believers will believe. The old timers will not. We talked about the King James Version having tons of errors. And these King James only guys are in a cult. 
Sean has Bible codes saying that the King James only folks are a bitter cult, or that word means rebellious cult. King James only is a rebellious cult. And what does it lead them to? It leads them to not believe in the Bible code. Because they believe the King James Bible is the final authority and it doesn't get any better than that. And it's filled, filled with error. Filled with error. Keep reading here. We're in Psalm 144, but God used it, right? It, it, it's, it, the, it's the truth as far as salvation goes. There's no error in the King James about how to be saved. Praise God. But it does have error. And for these people to say it's error-free, they are in grave error against God. Because he gave us the Hebrew that's error-free. And he gave us the Peshitta. The, the Peshitta, which is the Aramaic New Testament, which is error-free. Perfect. And these guys won't accept it. Because they speak English. Aren't you thankful for a Sean who speaks both Hebrew and Aramaic and shares it with us in English exactly the way it's supposed to be said? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God, Garris. I always out there sharing that word. Share the word, brother. God bless you. We're praying for you. And then in this Psalm, Psalm 144, verses 2 to 8, the question is asked, oh, what is man that you would even take knowledge of him? Or the son of man that you'd make account of him? Man is like to vanity. His days are a shadow that passeth away. Oh, bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains. Uh, Stephen Hawking and those guys believe that the, you know, bending, bowing down the heavens will get heaven here immediately. Boom. When you bend time and space. Bow down thy heavens. They were talking about this in Psalms 3,000 years ago. And come see us. O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightnings, and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows, and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. This is Noah's flood, guys. And it's about to be New York City, man. Amen. And deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children, the Russians, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood, Barack Obama and the Freemasons. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and the whole time they're lying. This is a whole plan of the Freemasons and the Nephilim and the devils, and they're lying the whole time. And they are vain and they're vain. But yet God has taken thought of us and he has shielded us and he has protected us. Only those who are wise. Who are the wise? Those who have entered the cross. We've entered Jesus. You know, everybody says, you got to ask Jesus in your heart. Paul says, uh, Christ in us and I in him. If any man be in Jesus Christ, he's a new creation. Hello? People get mad at me for saying Billy Graham preached it wrong. Billy Graham preached it wrong, guys. Salvation is you in Christ. You in his heart. When he says, behold, I stand at your heart's door and I'm knocking, he's talking to saved people. The church of Laodicea, who doesn't want to have fellowship with him. Salvation is you entering Jesus' heart, you coming to the cross, you entering the ark, you having faith, you believing. That is salvation. You entering into his burial. After having entered his death, you enter his death, you enter his burial, you enter his resurrection. Baptized in Jesus in belief. Immerse yourself in Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That man's wise and that man will be saved via the rapture. The rest of these people are going to be destroyed by way of flood. And it's just going to be regional, guys. When you see those 21 judgments in the book of Revelation, it's happening regionally. And these guys that come along and say, well, no, there's actually just seven judgments and they're just seen from three different perspectives. Fools, fools, fools. Liars, liars, liars. They don't understand how God's going to work. They don't know right now. I don't know how many people's watching. It ain't going to be many on a Friday night. But you guys are the ones that know that New York is about to be wiped out. And the other 8 million people on the planet don't know it. 
It's going to begin regionally. And this is pre-seal judgment. This is the judgment of God, the wrath of God on the United States of America. And it's a coming and it's going to be a flood just like Noah. And these people are going to die faster than Noah did because Noah had springs that broke loose from the ground and rain that fell from above. And it took 40 days and 40 nights to make it 15 cubits above the highest mountain. Bono says eight are watching live. They had 40 days to die. These people have less than an hour. It's going to, that mile high wave is going to be so destructive, guys. You and I can't imagine the horrors that's going to take place. Oh, man. Uh, Cheryl says, my friend Alex believes them too. I guess that's the Bible codes we were talking earlier. I missed it. Sorry about that. Uh, Carlos says, I used to watch uh, Ministry Revealed. I don't know what that is. Horrible. Uh, they say a 14-year tribulation. Yes, those idiots. Those idiots. When the Bible says seven, guys, what are you going to do with that? Daniel's 70th week. It's a week. A week is seven days. In this case, seven years. Okay. And it's coming, and these people are going to be destroyed, guys, the devastation. And thank God. Thank God for his goodness to us. Amen? Let's look at another one. Boom. All of the children. Just before God destroys New York City, he's going to rapture all the children in the entire world. Even Russian children, Chinese children, Pakistani children, Saudi Arabian children, Canadian children, children all over the world, North Korean, South Korean, Filipino. All these Catholics in the Philippines are going to be left behind and all their children will go missing. All of the children. This is from June 13th, 2000. 19. Vondo says this is found on page 244 of the book. 244. Guys, the number two is separation. Rapture. Number 44 is Obama. You and I are going to be raptured and separated from that fool and the judgment of God. Aren't you thankful for that? Mm -hmm. We're going to have peace and these little children are going to be separated from all this mess they're in the middle of right now. They're going to be separated, raptured from Obama and the world judgment come coming ahead. Cheryl says they built pod homes in New York City streets. New York City is so insane. Those people are going to die. So sad they were lied to. Yeah. So sad. The whole thing. And the thing is, there's a Catholic church in every borough. There's a Catholic church in every little neighborhood. They got churches all around. They got Bibles all around them, and they won't read their Bibles. They, they have loved the lie. Yeah, pods for the migrants. Yeah. And they're bringing more and more and more. Vonda also says that number 244 is the false Messiah appears at the rapture. When all the children go missing, folks. The true preachers are gone, the false preachers are here, and their false messiah appears. 244. George says lots of parents are going to cry at the rapture. They are going to absolute, they're going to break down. It's going to be so horrifying for them. Okay? They're going to know that New York City was destroyed. And then the, the Americans are going to be traumatized from that and their children missing. And then the rest of the world, traumatized. Amen. Obama's 44 and Sean is 444. Hello. Praise God, man. Add Jesus to the mix. The fourth man in the fire makes Sean's 44 going from being part of the sinful world like the rest of us to being saved. That fourth man in the flame changes everything. Obama hates that fourth man in the flame. I heard our blood will be left behind. It's probably true. There's no need for blood in heaven. All right. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. We're going to be spiritual glorified beings. Remember, all of Jesus' blood was missing. 
When he rose from the dead, he had bled out. When he rose from the dead, he went and he poured his blood out on the mercy seat, according to the book of Hebrews. There was no blood in his body, and we're going to be like him, for we shall see him as he is. No need for blood. Fano says, the ELS adds to 20. Distress, tremble. Right here, all the children. All the children. Let's read this, guys. Because God's so merciful, the poor children are hurting so bad right now, they're starving. Guys, if you would follow, if you would follow third world missions in their photographs and just the street children, the ones who were left orphaned, and that little five-year-old boy holding his little two-year-old sister, and they are so dirty and they are so starving and they're sleeping on the stair step or they're sleeping by a wall and big brother is taking care of little sister. That's all going to stop. They're going to enter rest. They're going to enter with the Lord who loves the little children of the world. Today, our friend was uh, in conversation with some atheists. And they were being so filthy toward God, saying despicable, I mean blasphemous things about him. Because he lets the little children suffer, that hypocritical, you know, and the names went on. They don't know that God gave the world to man to run for 6,000 years, and man has blown it. That's why Jesus is angry, and he's coming back to change things, and he's going to take it over. Gary says, I grew up in the Nazarene church, never was taught anything about the plan of God, never taught about the wrath of God, nothing about the rapture, the second coming, millennial reign of Christ. Oh, man, dude, dude, dude. So sad. I talked to a Nazarene pastor yesterday, a genuine humble man. I don't understand why they don't believe in the thousand year reign of Christ. It's just so sad. I told him about the seven days of creation prophecy. He never heard about it. He's been preaching for 20 years or so. Praise God. He was open and willing to take a look. Hallelujah for those guys, man. Hallelujah. We pray they all do because man, they're coming down to the final wire and most guys, Nazarenes aren't saved. They believe in a different Jesus. They believe in a different scripture. They believe in a different gospel. Okay? They're all part of that four square bunch. Okay? The Pentecostals, the Azusa Street lie. Holiness. Holiness. If I, if I don't walk holy, I'm lost. You can lose your salvation. These guys, got to, they got to hear the story, man. They got Bibles in their hands. They preach the Bible and don't know the truths of what this young man taught the old man. Way to go, man. Praise God. Let's look at this thing. It says, will all the children be caught up in the rapture? Yes, yes. Every child below the age of accountability, including those in the womb, will go to be with Jesus and get rest. This is going to be a very chaotic and sad day for the lost world. The day of rapture is going to be very sad, chaotic, stressful, terrorizing to the lost world. We're going to have so much peace and joy, and it will never, ever stop. Why on earth would you trade that in for the devil? Why would you stay on your default when all you have to do is believe and immerse yourself in belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? If any man be in Christ, will you please believe in his death, in his burial, and in his resurrection to save your sorry, hell-bound soul? And he changes it from that into a new creation. A sanctified, justified soul. He changes us. Don't you want to be a new creation? Aren't you tired of being who you've been? On your way to hell as your default? The day Jesus raptures us, the wise, those who have believed, it's going to be very chaotic and very tumultuous and filled with turmoil for those who have been left behind. Here's what the code says. This is God's word in this passage from June 13, 2019. All the children are righteous before God. They will be caught up. And then what does God say? Hallelujah. God himself says, praise be to Yah. Listen to this. This is Bible verse. This is God talking. All the children are righteous before God. They will be caught up. Hallelujah. They were gathered to him for a very great assembly of men, women, and children. And the people of earth wept very, very bitterly. 
Uh, Cheryl says, what is the age of accountability? We don't know. A good guess would be 12 or 13 bar mitzvah age. When Jesus was down there at the temple astounding the doctors, that would be maybe a good age to throw out there. But we don't know for sure. Okay? It might be 14. In the book of Exodus, the first Exodus, where the people left Egypt and were headed to the promised land, was 19. 19 was the age of accountability. And we know that 19 is the number for faith. So how gracious is God? Is he gracious to people all the way up through high school before they pay to be indoctrinated by the devil at the public college where tuition is free at this wicked level of, you know, elementary, junior high, high school? I don't know. For Israel, it was 19 years of age. Everybody at the the, the age 20 and over died and never made it into the promised land. But everybody who was 19 and younger did. Amen? Amen. Carlos says, one of my sisters has a 16-year-old and 11-year-old. My sister's Catholic. Oh, boy. Praise God. And, and maybe maybe got, that is the age. And my other sister has a 12-year-old and an 8-year-old. Praise God. We know that God is beyond merciful. His ways are past finding out. And he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. George found out yesterday that the population, or, or the other day when we were talking, the population of the ages 14 and younger, why in the world would the world statistics make the age 14? I don't know. Did God put that in their heart? But the statistic of the population of age 14 and younger is 1.9 billion plus those in utero, because they don't count those. They don't think that's human life in Wikipedia. That's just a blob of cells. So God's going to take everybody, every child, even those in the womb. Hallelujah. Let's read that code interpretation again. This is from June 13th, 2019. All the children, all of them are righteous before God. They shall be caught up in the rapture. Hallelujah, says God. God's excited about getting them out of here. Why in the world do Christians want to stay here if God's excited about getting all the kids out of here? Because they're on the wrong page with God, man. They don't know him. And the whole purpose for us in our maturity after salvation is get to know him, that I might know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And Jesus Christ wants us to know his mind and his mind is, I want the kids out of that hell hole. Hallelujah. That needs to be our mindset, and that needs to be our mindset for our adult selves. Get me out of here, Jesus. Come get us. Maranatha. Amen. Let's look at another one. This one here is from June 14th, the very next day, that says, all of the children vanished. All of the children vanished. Gary says, man, I love me some Joel 2, 15 and 16. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemblies, assemble the elders, gather the children and the nursing babies. Let the bridegroom go out of his chamber and the bride from her, whoa, dressing room. Praise God. Whoops. My phone fell out of my thingy. I've got to get a new thingy. This, this just is a crock. Praise God. I love that passage. Even in the book of Joel, Jesus is talking about the rapture and taking the kids. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me fix this if I can. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, let's look at the other one where God says he's going to rapture all the kids. Amen. Jesus loves the little children. All the little children of the world. And we don't know what that age of innocence is, but God does. Remember, in Exodus, it was 19. Jesus' is bar mitzvahed age, 12, 13, is when the Jewish boys are bar mitzvahed and the girls is, are as well. Okay? Let's look at this one. At the rapture, this is June 14th, 2019, all the children vanished. Amen. Oh, are you guys there still? Good night. I really did a boo-boo or something. All right. At the rapture, when Jesus fulfills the prophecy, the world will utterly will, will be utterly consumed with terror and anguish when they realize that the children vanish off the face of the earth. The verb snatched away, caught, caught away, is encoded in the main text. 
we got the main text going this way, up and down, okay? And inside of that, and what you'll see, guys, when you look at it, you'll see that there is a line skip, okay? He's got a line skip there where the red letters are every other line. You'll see a Bible verse going through there that doesn't have a red dot between each red dot, okay? And he spaced it. He did a, a, a line space, a line skip. And then this word that's going through it, which he says caught up, is every two line skips going through the one line skip. It's very incredible how God does his thing. Amen. And how he's done it. Oh, I hope you guys are still there. I don't even know if we're still recording. Amen. All of the children vanished. This is the translation. This is God's word from heaven. All of the children vanished. He caught up the children to heaven. His people rested. I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord. By the strength of the voice of the Lord is the resurrection of the dead. Woe to the lost, the suffering. Everybody left behind are going to suffer like they have never known. And that's just the first hour of seven years. And the seven years hadn't officially started at the rapture. The rapture causes rise for the Antichrist. Let's look at that translation again. All of the children, all of the children, hallelujah, vanished. He caught up the children to heaven. His people rested. Huh. We finally got rest. And it will never stop. We have entered rest. Read Hebrews 4. It's vital that you, in your mind, in your heart, in your soul, in your spirit, that you enter rest now. Peace be still, because we walk by faith and not by sight. Let there be peace. Let there be rest now in faith. The day of the rapture is going to be in body, going to be in glory. It's going to be real, pure, physical, spiritual, mental, everything. Rest, 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 rest. His people, God's people, the wise, the saved, those that entered the ark of the cross, the wood of the cross, those who entered in through belief, in the death, burial, and resurrection, those who have been baptized, those who are in Jesus. We are in his heart. We have dived into the deep end of death, burial, and resurrection, and we have been saved. His people rested. I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you ready to be delivered in that day? Says the Lord. The resurrection by strength of the voice of the Lord. Come up hither, rise. The trump of God, find out. By the strength of the voice of the Lord is the resurrection of the dead. He's gonna call us up by his voice, the last trump. Resurrection of the dead, woe to the lost, woe to the lost, the suffering. Woe, woe, woe to them. Jeremiah 39, 17, but I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord. I'm going to save you. I'm going to rapture you. I'm going to call you away. I will deliver you in that day, says the Lord. And thou shalt not be given unto the hand of men of whom thou art afraid. The Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. Obama's coming to kill you. Satan's boys, his men, they're coming to kill you. And the Lord's going to save us and he, we're not going to be given over to those folks. We're going to be saved from them. Hallelujah. That's what that snatching away, that kidnapping is all about. Jesus Christ is going to save us. and We are not destined unto his wrath. Amen. We are his lovely bride that he wants to save. He's caring for us. Amen. He's going to deliver us. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 and 53. In a moment. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the voice of God. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible. We're no longer going to be corruptible. We're no longer going to have beat down bodies and hurt minds and bad memories. Hallelujah. God's going to raise us up and change everything and change us into incorruptible. Incorruptible, just like he is, man. We're going to be just like him. We're going to put on incorruption and the mortal 
must put on immortality. And then Sean has a note here. He says, to those left behind, Psalm 73, 18 and 19, surely thou did set them in slippery places. Thou casteth them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation? In a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. We're calling you, we're, we're, we're pleading with you to be saved today. Your default is hell. If you live in the United States of America, you are destined to destruction even before the tribulation begins. It's not just going to be you know, a little destruction. This thing is going to be so devastating, mind-blowing. People who survive it will not believe it. They'll be terrified. Their children will be gone. Nephews and nieces, grandchildren, brothers and sisters will be gone, missing in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. And these people left behind, surely thou didn't set them in slippery places. Oh my goodness, it's, it's referencing to water, guys. Thou castest them down to destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with terrors. In one single moment, they are trapped. You and I have been raptured to safety. You and I are in a place of eternal rest, totally conscious and totally aware of everything except our negative past. It's all going to be awesome. Please be saved today. All the children vanished. And so did all the people who were children of God who were saved. Everybody who were saved are going to be raptured as well. Let's look at another one. This one is from June 20th, 2019. Salvation is by my faith. We are bought. Faith. Salvation is by my faith. We've been purchased already. You don't got to work. You don't have to do anything. You've been purchased. It's been taken care of. It is finished. You don't have to get baptized. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to read 10 to 20 chapters a day to be saved. You've been bought. Let's look at this. Sean says, knowing that a man is not justified, that means saved, just in the eyes of God, made righteous, made pure, made holy. No man is justified by the works of the law, but only by the faith in Jesus Christ. It's by placing your faith in him that Jesus justifies you, that he imputes, imparts, infuses his righteousness into you. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith in of Jesus Christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified and look at this verse Galatians 2:16 216 is Obama's number 6 times 6 times 6 is 216 okay Obama was born on the 216th day of the year August 4th his number is 216. He is the man of wretchedness. He is the man of sin. He is the son of perdition. And God gives us this verse, which is the opposite son. We are the sons of God, not because of any kind of work that we did, Freemasonry. They teach, oh, you got to work, work, help old ladies across the street. Be nice, be benevolent. Works, works, works. And Jesus said, uh, it's not by works. No man is justified by the works of the law. He's only justified by faith. Finished work, finished faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Let's see what God says in this translation. Salvation is by my faith. We are bought. Shepherding his flock, it will be taught. Now, this is Jesus shepherding his flock, the disciples who come to believe this. It was Paul shepherding his flock. Now, guys... All of us, if you're going to be saved, you're following Paul to follow Jesus. Right now, those of you in this transition period who have been introduced to the Bible codes, you need to be following Sean to follow Jesus Christ. If you're not following Sean to follow Jesus Christ, you are lagging in your spiritual growth. We followed Paul all the way to the end. Right now, a new word has been given to us, the six thunders of the book of Revelation. 
the heart of God, the fire of God, the poetry of God, the word of God by God's Moses, the descendant of Moses, Sean Mitchell. Now, for you and I to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe in what the Lord says about salvation. For by grace are we saved through faith, believing in Jesus' finished work. Are you saved? Now we mature on, we read the Bible, we read 10 to 20 chapters a day to mature. We encourage you to do that. Read 10 to 20 chapters a day. You'll come to know the heart of God, the mind of God, and it will dwell, his mind will dwell in your mind richly. And you will have been regenerated from hellish, devilish, earthly thinking into that which is holy and righteous unto God. Okay? Godliness. Then we see right here that salvation is by my faith. We are bought. Now, shepherding his flock, it will be taught. Jesus taught it. Paul taught it. And Sean is teaching it. We have now come to the end of Paul. And we are entering and following the shepherd, Sean. Because Sean has what John brought us. John was beyond Paul and gave us the book of Revelation. And that is the book that has promised a blessing if you'll read it, know it, understand it, and don't you dare change it because you'll be cursed if you change it. And within that book was a little book that John ate, and it was sweet on his tongue, and it was bitter in his belly. And he was about to write the seven thunders, and God said, don't write that, that's to be sealed. And once that becomes unsealed, follow along, children. Follow the shepherd. And you better come to acknowledge this. Now, people that have never heard of the Bible code, following Paul is great. Follow Paul. Remember when Jesus looked at the 12 disciples, the 11, and Matthias, and said, don't you dare go to the Gentiles. You go to the sheep of Israel. There was a transitional period there, and then Paul comes in and says, now you go to the Gentiles. There was two workings going on at the same time. There had to be until A.D. 70. And then finally, the Jews, they played out their mercy card. And God, instead of bringing a mercy, brought them judgment. And wiped them out and scattered them abroad. And now everybody had to follow Paul. Right now, we're in that transition period where it's okay to follow Paul still. We're following Paul and follow Sean. Those of you that have been introduced to the Bible code, we're following what he has written, what God has given him. We have accepted and we have believed that he is the son of Moses. He is Moses and Elijah for this time. Do you believe? Who's your shepherd? Do you guys know that Jesus Christ is not your shepherd, Gentile bride? He's the shepherd to the sheep of Israel. You and I are the bride and he's our bridegroom. It's a marriage. It's a wedding. It's different. It's a different relationship. Know the relationship. Know the shepherding. Okay? Know the flock. Because Sean is going to come back and you and I, this is the introduction. Guys, you and I are a sign to the Jews, that Sean is their shepherd. He's going to be their shepherd. And they're going to follow him and the other guy, Moses and Elijah. Follow their teachings. Follow the Bible code. Follow the word. Follow the fire. Okay? And Sean is going to be teaching, for by grace are you saved through faith. And he'll be shepherding his flock like Jesus shepherded his flock. And like he has discipled us, his bride. Through Paul. We are following Paul and Sean, those of us who believe. I encourage you in that to understand that. It will be taught excluding pride, humble meekness with the spirit of the cross, saying the truth, they will believe the resurrection of God to redeem them. You must believe in the death, burial, and resurrection to be saved. It's free. You've been bought with a price. Jesus paid the price with his blood. The, the ransom cost to save you from the devil, to save you from hell, to save you from the slave block was the blood of an innocent one. And Jesus paid the price in full. He redeemed you. He paid the ransom from your kidnapper, Satan, who's a thief and a liar. And it's already been paid for, paid for in full to redeem you. 
Jesus, the name of the Lord his God. He can deliver you in the Messiah, the Lamb. They lived with Jesus. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were to come out of Zion, for it is true, the resurrection of Messiah, the Savior. This was so true for the disciples. It was so true for the people in Israel, and it will be true for the people in Israel again. And their shepherd is a fellow by the name of Sean, Elijah, and Moses. And these people are going to follow their sayings. And you and I are at the transition period, just like Jesus and Paul were. Be ye followers of me, said Jesus, and I'll make you fishers of men. That was to the Jews. Paul's speaking to the Gentiles, and he says, Be ye followers of me, even as I am of Christ. If you're going to follow Jesus properly now, you're following Paul. And if you're going to follow him more properly now, you're going to follow Sean. Be ye followers of Sean, even as he is of Christ. That's what we've been told in the Bible code. Is that too heavy of a saying? Will you follow him no more? Will you hate the fact that he just spoke against your King James Version? And, oh, that was a heavy saying. I I can't deal with this anymore. I, I'm gone. Or what you going to do? 1 Corinthians 6.20 For you've been bought with a price. Jesus paid that price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Leviticus 5.16 and he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in the holy thing, and shall add a fifth part thereunto, and give unto the priest, and the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and he shall be forgiven him. That's a man that sinned. A man that sinned had to pay 20%, one-fifth. Tehran, Tehran, Iran, their market just dropped by one-fifth in a matter of an hour. Instead of giving to God, they gave to the man. And their dollar went from being a dollar to 80 cents. In one moment, it's going to happen around the world that way. And because it happened that way in Iran, it's going to get them off of Iraq's back. And Iraq is about to revalue their money, guys. And all the power is going to them in China. And it's happening right here in your USA. And a bunch of those people who ran through your border today were Arabs, sons of Ishmael, Chinese, North Koreans. A bunch of them ran through here. And the atonement, the price is going to be high, man. Your dollar is about to be worthless. Don't trust in your money. Don't put your confidence in anything. We trust in the Lord. Jesus has bought us. We're not worried about buying things, buying houses and lands. We are so glad and thankful that Jesus bought us. He purchased us. The price was his blood and we don't work for anything. We just believe in his works, his finished work. Psalm 14, 6 and 7, you have shamed the counsel of the poor. Now this is all the wicked rulers of the world. The, the, the poor who are in Christ Jesus, remember, blessed are the poor in spirit, that, that's those who, uh, we're not proud and arrogant. We're humble in our spirit and, and all we have, we've emptied ourselves of everything that the earth calls of value. We are poor that way, but we are rich in heavenly things. They don't care nothing about what we have to say. We are preaching smoke and we are preaching fire tonight. We are preaching lightning. We are preaching thunder tonight. And these people don't care about anything that God said or his men say. That's what this is talking about. Psalm 14, 6 and 7. You have shamed the counsel of the poor because the Lord is his refuge. You, you love the Lord? Oh, pff, we ain't got to hear nothing you got to say. Just like my friend Justin talking to those guys on Instagram today. They were, he, he shared with me. He took pics of, of the conversation. Wicked blasphemy. And they're going to speak down to you. You let them because we've been bought with a high price that we are valued highly in the eyes of God. He purchased us with his own life, his own blood, his own pain, his own loneliness. What a price to pay, and he paid it in full. You don't have to do a thing, guys. But those of you who've come to him and believed, they're going to hate you like they hated him. They're not going to care for you because you made the Lord your refuge. They're not going to listen to your counsel. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion when the Lord bringeth back the captivity of his people. 
Jacob shall rejoice and Israel shall be glad. And Sean will be their leader. Sean will be their shepherd, directing them to Jesus. And they had better follow Sean if they're going to follow Jesus. They better believe his words versus the false prophets who are crying out about a Jesus, about a Yeshua. Okay, do you guys understand the, the power in this of Sean being the shepherd and the people going to follow him to follow the right, righteousness and everybody who hates these Bible codes now? You're following the wrong shepherd. You're, you're following the devil. You despise the very heart and word and fire of God. His wonderful poetry, his Bible code, his word in his dialect, you hate it. And we're calling you over, we're calling you beyond the King James, the faulty, filled with error King James. And we're calling you over here to God's language. Will you believe? Will you follow God's guy? Will you follow God's shepherd to follow God? But if your heart turn away, so shall thou not hear. And, and so that you will not hear, but you're going to be drawn away and worship other gods. If you don't like the Bible code and you hate the Bible code, you're following a different God, a different Jesus. Because this is the very word of heaven inside the Bible. Now, the Bible, guys, the real Bible is Hebrew, Old Testament, Aramaic, New Testament. And if you're not following Sean, you're not following God. If you hate Sean, if you turned away the word that God has put in his heart to put on these tablets in stone, we learned that last night. You have a wicked heart, an evil heart of unbelief. We're calling you out of that to believe, believe, believe. You say you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior. Why don't you believe in Jesus Christ's dialect in his own, in his own language, his, his word in his own dialect, the Bible code. But if your heart turn away so that thou will not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whither thou passest over Jordan to possess it. Sean will be preaching, says, if you guys don't follow me and you don't hear what I say and you don't do what I say, when I say to do it, you're in trouble. And I'm, I'm announcing this to you today. Jesus announced it to us in his day. Paul announced it to us in his day. And Sean has announced it to us for the past seven years. What are you going to do with that, dude? I'm encouraging you to follow along. Know Jesus. Know the heart of God. Know these Bible codes. Salvation is by faith. We are bought. He paid the price. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the very same Jesus Christ who gave us this Bible code. Let's read it again. Salvation is by my faith. It's only by your faith, guys, can you be saved. We are bought with the blood of Jesus, shepherding his flock. Jesus shepherded his flock. Paul shepherded his flock. And how does Paul shepherd his flock? Follow me. We'll be followers of Jesus Christ. And we are the bride of Jesus Christ. Sean is the bride of Jesus Christ. We're at the end of being the bride of Christ. At the rapture, there will be no more bride of Christ. Sean will come back and he'll be dealing with the sheep of Jesus. And he's going to tell them, you be followers of me as I am of Christ. You better follow Jesus. Yeshua is your savior. Yeshua is your Messiah. He's the one who died for you. Your parents rejected him and refused and placed the curse upon your head. And he's going to shepherd them away from that. Shepherding his flock. It will be taught. He's going to be preaching grace, for by grace he is saved through faith. Jesus died for you, and he paid the price in full with his blood. Excluding pride, getting rid of that, and these people will be humble. Remember, uh, Moses and Elijah will be in sackcloth and ashes. Sean will be in sackcloth and ashes crying over Jerusalem to repent. Because their pride will have been excluded with the spirit of the cross saying truth. They will believe the resurrection of God to redeem them. Jesus, the name of the Lord, his God. It's Jesus, guys, Yeshua. He can deliver you in Messiah, the Lamb. All these are Jewish terms. They lived with Yeshua. Oh, that the salvation of Israel were come out of Zion. For it is true, the resurrection of his Messiah, the Savior. He did raise. And John will be preaching this in humility. All pride excluded. Sorry, King James guys. You guys are filled with pride. You belong to a cult. You belong to a cult of rebellion, says God. And we're calling you out of that cult. We're calling you out of that cult. And you quit following Ruckman. 
and you quit following the whiteboard guys, and you follow Jesus, and you follow Sean to follow Jesus. Get saved today. Believe in him, his finished work. I love you, man. Let's pray. Lord, we love your word. We love your fire. We love the truth. And I pray for everybody listening that we will get your truth. We'll gather your truth. We will know the truth. We will hide it in our heart. And our hearts will be solidified in your truth. Keep us from being wavering. For he that wavereth is double-minded. We're unstable in all our ways. And we're tossed about like the waves of the sea that's going to drown New York City. And keep us from being unstable as water and help us to be solidified on the foundation of you, Jesus. Firm, how firm a foundation. Thank you for laying that foundation. And please give us wisdom to build thereon our lives filled with gold, silver, and precious stone. Bless everybody listening. I pray that you'll bless your word, bless your word in our heart, the plain text and the coded text. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We lift you high. We follow you. We seek you. We thank you for bringing Sean our way so we could have these awesome codes and get our direction clarified in you. We follow your shepherd to follow you, the great shepherd, the chief shepherd, the wonderful, beautiful shepherd, the good shepherd. And we love you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. Love you.